Lorna Weifer was living and working in Canada's beautiful western province of Alberta. However, with the province teeming with black bears, working in the great outdoors doesn't come without its risks. Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. Lorna Weifer and her family were Irish. She was born in Dublin. But at just three years old, her family, including her two brothers, immigrated to Canada. There, she lived a life inspired by the great outdoors. In fact, it was this outdoors lifestyle that inspired Lorna's love for photography. The family resided in Fort McMurray in Alberta. Situated just less than 40 miles west of the Saskatchewan border, Fort McMurray is nestled in the Boreal Forest and has some of the harshest winters around. It's almost considered a subarctic climate, but the scenery is breathtaking. Lorna was a warm, conscientious person who made friends fast. In October 2013, at the age of 36, Lorna accepted a job as an instrument technician for the sustainable energy company Suncor. However, in May 2014, less than a year into the job, Lorna was working at the Suncor oil sands site north of Fort McMurray when disaster struck. She was working in the field with a group of six other people. Although the team had been briefed on bear safety, none of them carried bear spray. At around 2 p.m. on Wednesday, May 7, 2014, Lorna left the site where she was working to use the portable washrooms. While she was inside the porta cabin, a black bear came to investigate. Nobody saw it coming. It remained hidden amongst the trees. Most black bear attacks are predatory. This one didn't want to be seen. It was stealthy as it stalked toward the site. There was nothing to entice it to the site. No food was left out and there was no cooking nearby. The only thing it was after was easy prey. Moments later, Lorna unlocked the washroom door and began to walk back to the others. That's when the bear saw its opportunity. Standing just yards away, it suddenly ran at Lorna, approaching her from behind. It came at her completely undetected. Its large round frame galloped across the ground, its eyes fixed on the back of Lorna's head. Suddenly, she was thrown to the ground and let out a yell. At first, she didn't know what had hit her. Then she heard the guttural growling and the clacking of jaws and felt the moist breath on the back of her neck. Now she knew that it was a bear and she was in trouble. Upon hearing her scream, the others in the team turned to see her lying underneath a large male black bear. It immediately bit the back of Lorna's head and she yelled out in pain. It felt as though her skull was going to be crushed under the pressure. Lorna tried to clasp her hands behind her neck to protect herself. She reached behind her to push the animal off her, but she was pushed down into the ground face first. She tried to get up from under the weight of the animal, but with it weighing in excess of 300 pounds or 130 kilograms, it was too difficult. Seeing the drama unfolding, her colleagues raced to help. Nobody wanted to get too close to the bear. Nobody had a firearm or a bear spray. They had no form of defense for such a situation. Instead, they searched for things to scare the bear away. Somebody grabbed an air horn and pressed it. A loud, ear-piercing honk rang out, but the bear didn't flinch. It continued its attack on Lorna, and she lay helpless on the ground, hoping and praying the attack would end soon. Another collie grabbed a fire extinguisher. They immediately pulled the ring and a jet of water came out. They aimed it at the bear. The power from the water made the bear jump backward. It stumbled a few feet away, but then it came back to Lorna, continuing to bite her. Lorna's cries were growing weaker now. Her horrified colleagues could only shout and scream at the bear, throwing things at it to try and get it to leave her alone. But the bear persisted. All the things that would normally scare a lone bear away weren't working. They felt helpless as they watched on. It was a nightmare that wouldn't end. Blood pooled around Lorna's body. She was losing the fight. She was losing the will to live, and still the attack continued. Soon, Lorna didn't move, and the bear tugged and pulled at her lifeless body. Seeing the incident right before their eyes would haunt her colleagues for eternity. It was a truly horrific and devastating attack, though one which perhaps could have been stopped earlier had workers been provided with a firearm or bear spray.
As the minutes ticked by, the hope for Lorna faded. The brutal and prolonged attack continued for a full hour. Finally, the bear left Lorna and ran off into the woodland. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police arrived on the scene. It was a devastating incident to be called to. As Lorna was carried off by emergency services, there was no hope of bringing her back. The injuries she had sustained had been too devastating. Tragically, she was pronounced dead at the scene. The police immediately sealed off a 200 square meter area around the site and set several bear traps. If this was a predatory attack, then others may be at risk. The police had to act quickly, but it wasn't long before the bear responsible was spotted. As the police scoured the surrounding woodland, they came across a large male black bear. It fit the description and was still prowling the area, perhaps thinking about returning to the site. They raised their rifles and shot it. The bear fell to the ground. It was taken for a necropsy and DNA samples were taken. Another black bear was caught in the area in one of the traps, but the DNA evidence from the euthanized bear revealed that it was the one that was responsible for Lorna's death. The other bear was released. Lorna's death was a complete tragedy. Her family paid tribute to her and revealed just what a remarkable young woman she was. She had lived life to the fullest and was considered incredibly kind by those who knew her. In fact, she was thinking about returning to university to study psychology because she wanted to help people. It was in her nature. She also loved children and had volunteered as a big sister, a mentoring program for young people in Canada. The closest thing she had to a child, though, was her beloved dog, Abby, who passed away just two weeks earlier at the age of 15. After hearing the devastating news, Lorna's two brothers, Keith and Darren, flew over from where they resided in Thailand and Australia to be with their parents in Canada. The family came together to support one another. Black bear attacks are incredibly rare. They are considered far less aggressive than their grizzly counterparts. However, if a black bear does attack, it is usually for predatory reasons, which make the attacks much more deadly than defensive attacks. The last time somebody was killed by a black bear in Alberta was in 1991 near Slave Lake, when a 12-year-old boy was stalked and killed by a bear in his campground. Prior to that, two oil rig workers were killed in 1980. Although grizzly bears are considered a species at risk in Alberta and are confined to just Alberta's Rocky Mountain and Foothills natural regions, there are thought to be 40,000 black bears in Alberta. Considering the large numbers of black bears, encounters between them and humans are not that common. They are largely timid and shy of people, avoiding them or turning the other way if they hear people nearby. It seems Lorna was, sadly, in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs>